Christmas, a time of year that can mean many different things for many people. For some, it's a time to gather with friends and family to have that nice, delicious dinner. For others, it's a time to give back to the people who have done things for them, or a time to exchange gifts with that special someone. But for me, and maybe you, it's mostly about the birth of Jesus. Now, most of us know the story of Jesus' birth from Sunday school or reading it in the books of Matthew or Luke. Or maybe you've heard it from the perspective of a crippled lamb. But what about from the perspective of a cat? This is Thaddeus. Now, at first glance, you're probably thinking, it's a cat, so what? And I couldn't really blame you for that. However, Thaddeus' story is a little different than most. You see, cats like Thaddeus are brought into a difficult life once they're born. They're viewed with superstition, looked down upon with fear and contempt. Being associated with things like bad luck and symbols of evil omens, including death, and Thaddeus was sadly no exception. His mother, Lola, did her best to keep him safe and hidden in a barn near the city of Bethlehem due to knowing how humans treat things they don't understand and fear. But like all cats, they tend to let curiosity get the better of them, and one day he went out to explore. At first, nothing bad happened. He met some children and played with them the entire day before he went home, hoping to repeat it the next day. But sadly, it was not to be, for the parents of the children found out and chased him away, throwing things and cursing at him. Thaddeus ran and ran, tears in his eyes, until he got out of the town and into open fields. He laid down, paws over his eyes, thinking, why, why were they so mean to him? But as he laid there, he heard a sudden sound he'd hoped to never hear. The sound of hissing. Quickly, he turned around and jumped back before he got bit. Before him was the snake known as Mamu, the scourge of Bethlehem. Mamu came to Bethlehem two years before Thaddeus was born, causing mayhem and death whenever he wandered into town. <laughs> my, my, aren't you a fast one? Despite being so young. What, what do you want? I heard the sound of crying and the smell of tears. So I followed it, <laughs> and here I am. Tell me, child, what troubles you so? Thaddeus didn't want to be anywhere near Mamu, but with what he had dealt with that morning, he couldn't help himself and started talking about what happened. After Mamu heard the poor cat's tale, he started laughing. <laughs> of course they hate you, boy. Cats like you will always be hated for what you are instead of acknowledged for who you are. Black cats are associated with bad luck and death. Nothing you do will change their minds. And without saying another word, Mamu left, leaving the poor kitten to wallow in his pain. Thaddeus quickly learned to avoid humans and only go out at night. It broke his heart to stay away from the children that wanted to play with him, but he was too scared of what might happen if the adults found him. But as it does, time moved on, and one day during the month of December, 
Thaddeus found himself sitting on a cliff edge looking up towards the sky. With a sigh, he looked up and said, God, if you truly love me, help me. I know that I am more than what people call me. Then he left to head home. But little did Thaddeus know that on this day, his world would change. And not just his, but the entire world. When Thaddeus returned home, he noticed one of the few friends that he had, Joshua the crippled lamb, laying outside of one of the local inns with a slight forlorn expression. Hey, Joshua. Hey, Thad. Another rough day? <sighs> yeah. Honestly, buddy, I don't know what to do. I just... I'm tired of being chased and feared for things that are out of my control. I don't know if I can handle it much longer. But at least you can run and do things. I can't do almost anything due to my leg. I mean, I sometimes wonder why I was born this way. Does God really have a plan for us? I'm beginning to think not. But then the two boys heard a kind and gentle voice. Now, Joshua... You and Thaddeus shouldn't think like that, especially about yourselves. The two turned and saw Abigail the cow, or as many of the younger animals like to call her, Auntie Abby. God has a plan for every one of his creation, no matter who they are. Thaddeus gave Abigail an incredulous look. Sorry, Auntie Abby. But this one time, Josh and I disagree with you. God made us this way. We are picked on, bullied, and outcast, and we are tired of it. Abigail took a moment to look at the two youngsters before turning up to look at the stars that were beginning to show as the sun went down. Look at the stars. They are so beautiful, and so many of them, with each being different and unique in their own way. And while some may shine brighter than others, each and every one of them has a place in God's sky. Each and every one brings its own light to the world. The same goes for the two of you as well. The only thing that's keeping you from seeing that is yourselves. This caused the two to stop and ponder Abigail's words before they headed inside to sleep. As they made their way into the manger, Abigail couldn't help but sigh as she watched the two. She had always been there for the boys since they were born, helping to take care of them and babysit, and she prayed to God that their lives would improve, but seeing the forlorn and frustrated expressions, she couldn't stop the thoughts of doubt that entered into her mind. But at that moment, she heard a voice come up from behind her, that she hadn't heard in some time. After all these years, you still never cease to amaze me. Asa, you old camel, it's great to see you again. What brings you here after all this time? Oh, not much. Just the fact that my master had to return to his hometown due to that census thing. Even at my age, I still can't understand humans. Such odd creatures they are. Abigail couldn't help but give a small chuckle. Asa always had a way to put a smile on someone's face. But I can tell something is bothering you. Care to tell me what it is? Asa asked. Abigail proceeded to fill in Asa on the two young boys, telling him about the hardships they faced, and shared with him her own doubts that had begun forming. Oh, sweet Abigail, you have such a caring heart. Even when you were a calf, you always stopped to help and comfort the others. Those boys, I believe, are lucky to have you in their lives, and it's not necessarily wrong to have doubts. Doubt is natural. Faith is not the absence of doubt, but rather faith keeps believing even in the midst of your doubts. Pondering your unanswered questions can often be healthy if it motivates you to seek greater knowledge and truth. 
Remember that faith is more than seeing. Faith is more than the observable facts. Abigail smiled and said, Thank you, Asa. You know just what to say. Think nothing of it, my dear. <sighs> as much as I would like to stay up and continue talking, these old bones and eyes need to rest after a long trip. We can catch up more in the morning. Of course. Good night, Asa. But as the two old friends separated, they failed to notice that Thaddeus was standing near the entrance to the manger and heard everything that they had said, and it stirred a memory deep in his mind, one from a time when his father was still alive. On a cliff edge overlooking the land sat Thaddeus and his father. Thaddeus looked up to his father and said, Father? Yes, my son. Why are we here? What do you mean? I don't know, it's just... <sighs> I can't help but remember what Mamu said, and... Do not listen to what comes out of that vile serpent's mouth. Nothing good ever comes from him. For a brief moment, the two sat in silence before the young cat's father spoke. My son, we cannot help the way others think or how we are brought into this world. Instead, focus on this one thing. Forget those things which are behind and reach forward to those things which are ahead. Press toward the goal for the prize that is promised to those who have faith in God. When hard pressed, cry out to the Lord, for he gives strength to the weary and increases the power of the weak. For those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength. They will soar on wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not be faint. You've been hanging with Uncle Asa again, haven't you? <laughs> I suppose I have been talking to that old camel a lot lately. Uh, think it's too late for me? Mm, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> Thaddeus smiled at the memory. Unfortunately, the happy memory soon became a sad one. A few days later, Thaddeus' father would become a victim of Mamu's. Not by Mamu's fangs, but by the people who saw his father walk past a child who, minutes later, was killed by Mamu, and the people blamed him for what happened, and took matters into their own hands. Thaddeus shook his head to try and rid the thoughts before going to sleep. Later that night, Thaddeus was awakened by the sound of movement. As he looked around his home, he saw something he never expected. There, lying in the hay, was a woman, with a man sitting beside her, holding what appeared to be a newborn baby, who did not make a sound other than a few small giggles, <laughs> along with a smile that for some reason he couldn't explain brought a feeling of warmth to him. Also, there were some shepherds, and a couple of people he never met before, but they had nicer clothes than that of any other humans he had seen. And finally, next to the woman, he saw one of his few friends that he had, Joshua, helping to keep the baby warm, and to his surprise, he saw just how happy and content Joshua seemed to be. He so, so wanted to go over and take a look at the newborn infant to try and figure out exactly what was happening, but fear of how the adults would react kept him at bay. So he just stayed where he was and looked on. After a little while, the shepherds and the wise men left, and the parents laid the baby in a manger and settled down to take some rest and soon fell asleep. Thaddeus, too, was getting ready to go back to sleep, but before he could, a dark feeling came over him, 
and soon he knew why. From out of the shadows, making his way towards the manger, was the vile serpent Mamu. As Mamu was making his way towards the sleeping infant, Thaddeus saw the murderous intent in the snake's eyes. Out of pure instinct, Thaddeus rushed to the baby's defense. Out of my way, boy! This does not concern you! If you're thinking of attacking that baby, then I'm going to stay right where I am. Thaddeus shot back. This threw Mamu completely off guard. Why? Why would you protect something that will only grow to hate and despise you? Have you forgotten that humans have treated you horribly? No, I haven't. And even now I ask myself why I'm doing this. But you know something? Even though the humans have treated me poorly, even if that child grows to be like the rest, right here, right now, as far as I'm concerned, that baby is innocent, and I will not allow you to touch a single hair on its head. Thaddeus declared. You sound just like your pathetic, miserable father! And with that, Mamu attacked. Thaddeus jumped back, unsheathed his claws, and took a swipe at the snake. Back and forth they fought, Thaddeus using his claws to keep Mamu at bay while keeping himself between the baby and the snake, with Mamu trying to sink his fangs into the cat. Why are you doing this, Mamu? You've never put so much attention or effort into taking a life. What makes this baby any different? I don't answer to you, boy! No, get out of my way so that I can kill the brat! Shouted Mamu as the snake lunged again, his fangs coming so close to biting the cat's forelimb. At this, Thaddeus noticed that Mamu's attacks weren't as smooth or calculated as before. Now the snake was just trying to bypass his defenses and get to the child. Why would make this child so special? But seeing how determined Mamu was, it only strengthened his resolve to protect this child no matter the cost and prayed that God would give him the strength to do so. In Mamu's mind, he knew he was running out of time. He saw the child's parents were starting to wake from the sound of fighting. He had to act fast before it was too late, and he couldn't waste time dealing with this insufferable hairball. So he changed tactics, swung his tail at Thaddeus, and succeeded in hitting the cat, knocking him down to the floor. Taking his opportunity, Mamu took the chance to slither his way to the resting baby as fast as he could. When he was within lunging distance, he coiled back and flung himself into the air Fangs poised to deliver his toxic venom. He could see it. Victory was his! But just before he could deliver the killing blow, he felt a sharp pain in the back of his neck. Then darkness. Thaddeus stood over the fallen body of Mamu, panting, as he was able to recover and save the child just in time. As he tried to check his breath, the sound of the baby caught his ears, and he went and checked on the child. What he saw melted his heart. Two eyes full of life and kindness that brought him a sense of peace and warmth he had never felt before. The little baby reached his little hand out towards Thaddeus, who couldn't help but lean into it. Soon he found himself laying down next to the baby and fell asleep. The child's parents witnessed the entire thing and couldn't help but be grateful toward the cat for not only saving their son, but smiling at the sight of the two of them holding each other as well. 
Awakened by the sound of fighting, the farmer came down to investigate. I heard a commotion. Is everything all right? Mary looked to the farmer and said, No, everything is fine now. No need to worry. You can go back to sleep. The farmer nodded his head, and right before he was about to leave, he saw Thaddeus laying in the manger with the baby and started to panic for the child's safety. He made his way over to remove the cat, but Joseph, Mary's husband, stopped him. Leave the cat alone. But sir, you do know that's a black cat, don't you? Yes, and it saved our son's life from that snake which now lies dead. That was when the farmer noticed the limp form of Mamu and looked towards Mary and Joseph, who nodded their heads in acknowledgement. The farmer looked at the sleeping Thaddeus in astonishment before he grabbed the snake's body, said goodnight, and left. The following morning, the news that Mamu, the scourge of Bethlehem, was finally slain, and all the local farm animals grilled Thaddeus for what happened. Wow, Thad, I can't believe you fought Mamu and won! Joshua exclaimed. Weren't you afraid? Asked a small field mouse. <laughs> you have no idea, responded Thaddeus. Why did you do it? Weren't you worried the humans would have chased you or done something even if you saved that baby? A swift asked. To be honest, at that moment, my only thought was to protect that baby. It was the right thing to do, and nothing else was on my mind. Thaddeus replied. But a lamb named Isaac scoffed. Yeah, right, he said as he got up and got into Thaddeus' face. You just saw an opportunity to try and become top animal around here. Give it a bit of time, and I'll be back on top and everything will be the same as it was before. Isaac said, with no small amount of smugness, but before Thaddeus or anyone else could reply back, Isaac felt a dark shadow fall over him, with an almost ominous aura along with it. Slowly, he turned to look up at the disapproving look of Abigail. Isaac, that is enough out of you, young man. Now apologize, right now. Abigail said with a stern tone. But before Isaac could stutter a response, Thaddeus spoke up. It's okay, Auntie Abby. In a way, he could be right. Maybe things will end up going back to the way they were before. But to be honest with you, I'm okay with that. But honestly, I'm okay with that. Almost everyone looked at him as if he'd gone crazy. Asa spoke up and asked, Lad, why would you say something like that? Surely you don't like all the bigotry from the humans, do you? Of course not. But the thing is, I can't change the way people think. The only thing I can do is change the way I think and how I view myself, and to not be too concerned with what others think of me. At this, all the animals went quiet and listened intently to what Thaddeus had to say. Even Isaac, who was taken aback from Thaddeus's initial agreement, stopped his usual boisterous attitude to listen as well. For most, if not all of my life, I've been feared, hated, and ridiculed for what I am. Now I've heard people say that God has a plan for each and every one of his creations, and up until now, I honestly was doubting what my purpose was in his plan. Just like you, Joshua, you felt the same way as I did. But think about it. If your leg was fine, you might have been out in the field last night instead of helping to keep that baby warm. For me, the stable was my safe haven. It was a place for me to get away from all the negativity and hatred. If I was born different, it's possible that I may have been sleeping somewhere else, and Mamu might have succeeded in his attack. I may not know what God has in store for me, but I do know that the events that transpired were just the beginning for what he has planned, not just for me, but also for the world. 
After Thaddeus had spoken, all the gathered animals started to think about what he had just said. This little cat, who had faced nothing but hatred and fear for most of his life, had found a spark of hope that gave him the strength to keep pushing forward. The strength to have faith and trust in God that no matter what would come his way, God would be there and begin to ponder what this newborn infant would bring to the world. And from that day forward, while, yes, there were still those who held on to their superstition, the people of Bethlehem, slowly but surely, began to look and treat Thaddeus in a new light and not judge him for how he looked, but how he acted. As for Thaddeus, he and the baby, whose name was Jesus, would grow to be close friends and go on many adventures together. <laughs>